What is up, risk takers? Welcome to the Kill Pete Strategy. I am Pete. I am a top player in the game of Risk Global Domination. I have a daily release schedule on YouTube and I stream on Twitch almost as often. You can check my page for the upcoming schedule. If you are interested in getting better at the game of Risk, I invite you to subscribe to my channel and come along the ride with me. For today's episode, we're going to be doing a tutorial style video where I am going to be showing you um, a few things. This one's going to be focused more for beginners. We're going to play a game of classic fixed because it's the most popular type of game played and um, the eye to explain to you as a newer player what you're looking at when you get into the app. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you this is a new season. Why is my rank zero? So we're going to be playing as Reginald Schmopus Boy Jeej, the true classic fix grandmaster in my house, is my orange cat Reggie. Um, we're sitting at a master rank zero, but you can see it still has the original record. This is my classic fixed account. We've gone 41 and 44, made it to GM, currently sitting as a master. But I can't see exactly where we're at because we haven't populated the leaderboard. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go into global domination. I'm going to try and find a classic fixed game. So how would you go about doing that? Well, I would want to set it. Here's how you use all the filters, right? So you go to the bottom left, you click on the filters button and you want to say, do you want auto placement? Do you want manual placement? Or do you want either, right? Do you want progressive cards? Do you want all cards or do you want fixed cards? As far as maps go, you can select between all and own. As far as AI difficulty goes, there are uh, beginner, easy, medium, hard, and expert bots. I'm going to leave that open. I want a 60 second turn timer just because I don't like getting stuck in a long game. A 90 second turn timer could be fine, particularly for folks playing on larger maps and on their phone. Um, but anything more than that is just, you can end up getting stuck in a game. Well, hello, are you going to help me? Here is the Schmopus boy himself, the classic fixed grandmaster, and the real strategic genius behind the Kill Pete strategy. You're going to help me with my game, buddy? I think I'm going to put it to 60. We're going to leave Fog off. We're going to leave Blizzards off. We're going to leave Alliances on, because in classic fixed, Alliances are essential to communicate your intentions. I want to play a ranked game. I want balanced blitz dice, and I'm not going to filter out players. So maximum rank, minimum rank, right? Let's see if there's a game like this that exists. Otherwise, I will make one. Looks like there is. They want a three-player game, though. I don't think I want to play a three-player game. So it would immediately start in three players and fill up, which means I have to create my own. So we go to create. And now I'll get to decide exactly the type of game that I want to play. And this is usually how I do it, right? Auto setup, fixed cards, expert bot, 60 second turns, no fog, no blizzards, yes alliances, yes ranked, uh, balance splits dice with no filtering of players so anyone can come and join. And we'll see how long it takes for this lobby to fill up. Once you're in the lobby, if you're the host, you can add slots or delete them. Um, I want to play a six player game ideally. Sometimes it takes a long time for a lobby to fill up, in which case um, one thing you could do is you could throw a bot in to make it look full from the outside and then kick the bot out once it fills up. Some people use this in a scummier way to try and trick newer players into playing a 1v1. So if you ever see a lobby that looks like this, and you pop in, and they're all bots, and the host just fires the game immediately, you don't have to ready up. So I'll, I'll show you what that means um, when I join a game from somebody else. But the, once the lobby fires, there's a ready button across the bottom and I know you might have already paid coins into this lobby but 
as long as you don't hit the ready button, you're not obligated to play any game. So keep that in mind. Until um, the devs design a lobby where the ready is equivalent to the enter and the um, committing ourselves to understanding all the settings happens outside the lobby, this is what we're stuck with. It doesn't look like anybody wants to join my game, so I end up with a bunch of dead air. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video now, I'm going to wait for this lobby to fill up, and then we'll fire the game. All right, looks like we have a full lobby. Let's go. So I fire the game with six players, and in this uh, period of 10 seconds, all players have to hit the green ready button. So don't forget if you're trying to join a game to hit the ready button and don't feel obligated if you're in a lobby you don't want to play. You don't have to hit it. This is your last right of refusal before you commit your rank. So we start the game. I'm in the second seat. I immediately press S on my keyboard or hit this toggle on the left to show my stats because I want to keep track of that first. Okay. I'm gonna play to win. So I'm gonna try and do my best game while still describing to you guys. How to play. All right. I think my best move is to get out of Africa. White has a ton, White has all their material in Africa, South America. So it looks like, unfortunately, I have to put my troops in the Europe position. Not ideally where I would start, but that's okay. I'm going to point my troops closer to Europe and hope this shakes out. Okay, so the first thing I do after that is I figure out who I'm playing against. So I just like to take a quick look at the players. This used to be more impactful when you could see players' ranks. You can't currently see that anymore in a ranked game. In the first position, we have Lynn Bagot flying the flag of the Netherlands, playing as black. In the second position is myself. This is the classic fixed account. We've gone 41 and 44, made it to Grandmaster, playing classic fixed. Rolls a 6v3, which isn't 100% roll. White player definitely going for Africa, and that's fine. He saw I moved my troops out. I'm happy to accept that loss. In the third position, we have Spinnacop Vark, flying the flag of South Africa, playing as white. In the fourth position, we have Ali Boss from Turkey, playing as green. In position five, we have Dirty Tricks from Belgium, playing as magenta. <laughs> Hits a two. Okay, says so get the fuck out of Europe. Well, green wants Europe. I'm, I'm kind of figuring out where they want to go based on how they move. These are important things about risk, right? What is the psychology of your players? What do they want? Um, in the final position, we have Lemon Slippers from the United States of America playing as red. So because green wants to be in Europe, I want to be outside of it. And it might be that I'm playing a no continent game this time around. We can talk more about what that looks like as we go on. Okay, so the basic rules of risk. You have three phases in your turn. You have draft where you add troops. You have attack where you make your attacks. Do I lose my five? No. Red goes into Asia. Okay, and the five goes out. It does. Hmm. Okay, maybe I can have North America then. Black's going to hit my two and take Australia. No. Okay, Black plays a slow claim for Australia. All right. Given that... Here's what I see happening. I see red slamming into this. I see Black taking it. I see white taking this. I see green wants this, and white and magenta will have to fight over South America. So I might be safe in North America? 
I'm going to lose this two for sure. So I'm going to roll one, but I'm not going to blitz it because you get 37% chance on blitz. With a manual roll, you have slightly better odds. Closer to 40, I do get it. And now I'm just going to click on that to toggle my dice back to blitz because there is um, a decision in this game that the dice don't default back to blitz. They stay where you set them. And I can explain more about what blitz versus manual rolling is. So when you blitz, you roll all of your dice until you win the roll. What balance blitz does is it rounds up the top 15% of the probability distribution to 100 and the bottom 15 to 0. So any roll that's 85% likely or up gets rounded to 100, so you have guaranteed rolls in this game. The reason I switched to manual is when you manual roll, you get true random odds, and anything under 50% odds in balance splits gets rounded against you. Okay, white is greedy, and white would like both um, South America and Africa leaving magenta with no real play. I'm not actually sure what white is doing. All right, so let's go over some of the other toggles in this game. Um, the settings menu, the you have the continent overlay and you have the card overlay. So let's explain what these do. First thing I set on, immediately in the games, I press S on my keyboard. Or I hit this little man in the bottom left. <clears throat> C on your keyboard is the continent overlay. So what do continents do in Risk? You see how they're each worth a number. There are six continents on the classic map. North America is worth five. Europe is worth five. Asia is worth seven. South America and Australia are each worth two. And Africa is worth three. Those, that number of troops is what the continent is worth at the beginning, is the bonus troops you get at the beginning of your turn. <laughs> it's the bonus number of troops you get at the beginning of your turn if you hold the entire continent. Okay, black just got pummeled by red. Okay, and we see this so often, the no Australia, no win plan. I'm still in three places, and I'm just going to try my best to get out of everybody's way. White is using the alliance feature to tell me to attack red. Obviously, that doesn't make any sense for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit up in North America, hope Magenta moves down, and then I can hopefully take North America, which is why I started stacking there after I figured out where everyone else wanted to be, right? It is a psychology game. As much as understanding the mechanics of the game help you, understanding what your opponents want and how to give it to them without getting in their way is a strong advantage. White is going to leave South America. They're going to cut through Brazil and move their troops out, giving Magenta South America giving white, hopefully, Africa. And then Magenta will have only one direction to go, which would be up into North America. So there really isn't much of a safe place for me on this board. And it might make more sense for me to get out of North America and just start stacking in Asia. I'm holding three cards, okay? You see the little number in the top left of everyone's avatar. These is the this is the card overlay. So this shows you which cards I'm holding. I'm holding uh, Ontario, Ural, and Western Australia. And if you look at the cards themselves, you can see that corresponds. You see how the Western Australia territory has <clears throat> plus two on it. That's because I own it. So if I had a set and I traded this set in, I would get plus two on that territory. Now. If you have multiple, you only get plus two on the first trade you trade in. And then you must be like, well, what's a set and when do you trade it? A set is uh, one, of a, or one of each kind or all three. So um, you, you can have three K 
cavalry, three infantry, three artillery, or one of each equals a set. There's also two wild cards in every deck. Okay, so Magenta's just going to slam me. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave. Ooh. Black's going to die. Poor Black. Can I kill them? Yes, I can actually kill Black. If Black doesn't trade, I can kill them and take four cards. The no Australia, no win plan. You see it again and again, but Black trades and they're going to fuck over Red for being stupid and taking Australia. All right. So now we see an attrition battle for Australia where both players lose. Oh, are you upset by that? After suiciding into the, the, the Black player? So dumb. Okay, Black takes it. Red is now at 10. Can I kill them? Probably. Okay, so 7v3 is 100% roll. I think I can kill red. Let's try. So red only has 10 troops. 9, 8, 7. 6v3 is only less than 100%, so it's 91, so there's a 9% chance this roll fails. But I get it. Red dies, and I take 3 cards. And I do it nice and slowly, too. I don't want to scare any of my opponents to think that I am as fast as I am. I take the three cards, and you see how I own two. So if I traded both of these two in, I would have to choose between, see how it goes gray? I'd have to choose between China or Siberia. I'm just going to take the Siberia card now, and we can trade that set in next time. I end up taking Australia for myself. So black can't retaliate. They have no cards. They broke their alliance with me, but their game is over. I don't think white slams into me. I think, yes, white takes Africa. All right. So we will have advanced the game state to the four player game. Black will die next turn. So it will be me, Magenta, and White holding bonuses and green without one. Very early acceleration. Yeah. I think green skipped a card too. In order to get a card, you have to take one territory on your turn. You see how after I killed Red, I took his cards and I was able to trade in turn. So you get an additional draft step. <coughs> I'm trying to just really slowly talk out my thoughts. Normally I take the mechanics of the game as a given and I talk more about the strategy. So in this video I'm really trying to explain to you how the game mechanics work. Green has bought it. So we have three human players. Well, Black's about to die. Once Black dies, there will be uh, three human players, myself, White, and Magenta. How do I know that Green bought it? So when a player attacks, you'll see when Magenta makes an attack, arrows extend from the territory he's attacking from to the territory he's attacking to. When a bot attacks, the territory just lights up. So you can look at the player, and you can see I'm offline right now. That will say, tell you that he's bought it out. Yeah, it looks like Magenta just wants to take North America and be a greedy, greedy guy. There's no way for me to get the kill on black. I think it's safer for him just to be dead. No point in having a player who would now have a vendetta against me continue to exist. 
White kills black, it's two cards for free. This is the moment that you would absolutely easily kill the black player. If he doesn't immediately do it, it tells you a lot about his ability. Yeah, you get fed a kill. Black player dies. White player has three cards for taking the two. He's going to fight with Magenta over North America. This is a good situation to be in for me. So Magenta has 38 troops. White has 40. I have 26, but I have five cards. And I have a 10 trade. Uh, green bot sets in. So the bot will be strong. And hopefully it will cause some trouble for my opponents. Magenta loses their European position. <clears throat> oh, and the bot is going to guard that Europe. Okay. Do we see Magenta fight with white? The sooner the better. Hmm. Okay. So. I... I have five cards. If you have five cards at the beginning of your turn, you're forced to trade. I'm going to use the Japan card. I could trade it up so I had this cannon, and then I would lose the equity from the Japan card. So you see why I do it that way? I think I'm just going to make an easy attack. and turtle up a bit and stay away from the fighting and hopefully the green bot causes trouble for magenta and white and i just sit with my australian stack it's unfortunate that we see the very typical opener where someone hopes to take australia someone else takes australia and they both lose because of it this is why i tend to steer away from australia White player probably should break green's bonus off the two. So green is now holding, the green bot is holding a plus five, which means at the beginning of their turn, they should get eight troops. Is it going to hit me? He's just in Asia. What's his plan? Sure, I hope he doesn't hit me. He's moving his troops into himself. Okay. But doesn't break the bot. That will come to bite him. I'm pretty sure. Bot gets eight troops, right? Plus five. So the reason the bot is getting eight troops, I haven't gone over this yet. What is the reinforcement rule for risk? Count the number of territories you control at the beginning of your turn. Divide by three. Round down. You can never get less than three. So the minimum troops you get at the beginning of your turn is three. I have nine territories left, so I will get three, but I also have a bonus. This continent is worth plus two, so I will be getting five on my turn. The bot just got eight. So um, green's bonus is worth a lot more than mine. And the longer green stays out there, the more trouble it's going to be for my opponents. So I'm just going to keep taking cards and sit in my corner and hopefully they fight each other. And hopefully they fight the bot.
All right, so White decided to punch the bot. Didn't lose too many troops because of it. White is my ally. I can communicate them using this alliance menu. Where's Magenta? <coughs> oh, maybe I just missed it. Maybe I just didn't ever offer them an alliance request. Magenta is the strongest player in this game at 57 troops. White has 52, and I'm at 42. The bot is at 38. I'm in the worst position long term. I'm going to see if I can get away with holding 12 territories. So that's the next thing I do. 12 territories means I would get an additional troop on my turn right. I'd get 4 and then plus 2, so I'd get 6. The same as white. White hit some bot. All right. I'm still keeping parity with these guys. It's very much a game of balance, classic fixed. So you want, um, you don't want to be the one to break the balance of the board. And as soon as the balance is broken, you can try and take advantage. The current situation is I'm amicable with the white player and the magenta player. And white has shown willingness to break green's bonus. So yeah, magenta's gonna take their shot now, break the bonus, good. So we're all working together to weaken and kill this bot. And then we'll go into a three player game. I have to, I have to trade because I'm holding, I'll show you, I have to trade because I'm holding five cards at the beginning of my turn. So I'm forced to trade. I do have the best possible set, all three. I do have the plus two on Western Australia. And I'm going to do a split guard now. So I'm going to push out into China and divide my guard so that I'm essentially claiming this piece of the board for myself. It's not super offensive to white. We can still trade. We can still take cards in this intermediate zone. I'm not taking Asia. I'm not threatening to take Asia. I'm just saying I'm going to guard my Australian turtle now outside a little bit further. I'm holding 13 territories. Okay, white sets has 69 troops. Sets up with 220 stack guard in Africa. And 17. That goes into the 5. Okay. And he's aggressively hitting this bot. This is nice to see. My opponents are hitting the bot for me. Allowing me to now be in the lead in terms of troops. The green bot sets in, gets the 8. That goes in North America, which is good for white and bad for magenta, but they make their attacks in Europe. Okay, white is now brought down under 12. We will be generating at the same rate. And I am out generating magenta, so I'm in a leading position currently. What I mean by out generating is I'm holding 13, so I get 4 plus 2, so I get 6 a turn. White gets 6 a turn. Magenta only gets 5. I'm just going to get an easy take on the bot. The northern east corner of Asia is kind of this nice no man's land that nobody really wants. So if I can sit on one, two, three, four, five, six territories without offending the white player, then we have this great sort of understanding in the middle. 
I'm only open to him, but it's kind of mutually assured destruction. If I hit him, he hits me, and then Magenta wins. This is sort of how you have to negotiate a three-player endgame. I'm in the lead at 71. Magenta has 68, and White has 62. White is over-attacking the bot, in my opinion, but I'm not going to stop them. I take an easy attack on magenta but I don't leave I leave a medium-sized guard right I have a nine stack guard in Alaska just saying nobody come back this way and we don't have a problem and then nobody owns North America we'll see if that pisses anyone off they also have the option to negotiate with me right I can use the Alliance menu to try and send requests or agree disagree and love no no worries sending love to the world okay bot sets in again this bot has a lot of cards 45 troops nobody wants to pop the stacks really white is really trying to attempt to take europe Looks like I'm going to trade with Magenta in Northwest Territory. Which is fine by me. I'm in a great position now. Um, okay, so here's the choice. Do I want to trade Indonesia or Eastern Australia? In this case, the choice is neutral. It doesn't matter. I'll hold both of them probably for the rest of the game. So now I'm making a sneaky move. I'm going to try and attack two territories. So when I inevitably lose one, I'll still be over 15. I'm, I'm sitting at 16 territories. I would then start generating seven a turn. I expect Magenta to hit that. I don't expect White to hit this five. And if they do, that's okay. I'll lose five troops, but I'll know something. I'll have learned something about White. I don't think White hits it. I think White continues to work on the bot. Okay, white hits it. Good for them. I think that was a good move. White wants to keep me under 15. Yep, green retakes Europe. So I would hit the seven, but I'm not because he, White's going to use it to push back into Europe. I'm almost certain of it. If Magenta, or if Magenta doesn't hit that, then I still have 15. I'll get that extra troop anyways. No, he's going to hit it. Good. He attacks there. So I go back to 14 and I'm generating at the same pace of White. No worries. I'm very confident white sends that seven into green. Sometimes you just have to let people hit you and not react. Ooh. He's going to let Green hold his bonus. That's dumb. 
<laughs> oh, I see what he's doing. He wants green to hit me in Asia. It's not as dumb as I thought. But he spent a lot of troops to do that. Can work with this. Yep, go back to 14. I'm going to take the Mongolia card. I'm actually going to show some good faith to white. And break the bot but cheaply and you'll see where I put my stack so now I'm forming a better chokehold over Asia and I'll probably start my turn with 15 territories not that I'm trying to take Asia because you never really want to take that plus seven it's it's just too scary for your opponents But I did sort of need to help the team work on the bot. Because I have accrued a decent amount of advantage. All right, white has a nice big 43. Bot's gonna retake Europe. Magenta shows full trust in white. So I give them the heart. I put the guard in. I'm going to say you can hit me. Mm -hmm. because if he gets North and South America, he's going to get plus seven. If then I am allowed to hold uh, Australia and Asia, which is a big if, but if I am, then I'll be getting plus seven, eight, nine. White's not accepting this deal. Oh no, white's going to kill black finally. Or white's going to kill the green bot finally. Okay, white takes the kill. All right. We're going to be in a three-player endgame. So, white is forced to trade. Green was holding four cards. White now holds five cards, goes back to draft, and puts in a trade. Start slams, slamming troops into me. Suggesting that the two of them have a deal to kill me. Magenta just takes North America. No, they have a deal to kill me. Great. So what do you do in this situation? You make yourself valueless. You hurt both of them as badly as you possibly can. I 
and you stack in a single position. So I have a 67 stack, Magenta has a 72, and White has 51 troops. White sets. Now, who does what? Right, we have an equal three-player endgame. I have 110 troops, but both of my opponents are collaborating to kill me. White's going to thin himself out. But only hits me. I think Magenta wins this game. Because Magenta's going to continue the pylon. Seems like I get third. Magenta could just kill me now and give White the win, but I don't think he does. All right, we see a shuffle. Let's see if my opponents accept it. So I'm gonna take North America out of this deal. I'll leave a 10 stack there. put everything guarding Northwest Territories, which guards the other two fronts. This is good for white. White just got 10 troops. Do you want to hit Magenta with me? And then I ask him, attack pink, plus up, plus down, plus up. He's thinking about it? Yeah, okay, good. Pink put themselves in an inferior position. He's going to take... White's going to take Europe because white is greedy. That's good for me. Yeah. Good. That's good for me. Looks like I probably hold North America. This is a very interesting endgame. And do the same thing with magenta attack white yes no okay magenta sets gets the eight set he is the troop lead at 76 he's gonna break me here hmm Breaks magenta, good, or breaks white, good. Good, you guys just keep fighting. That's lovely. I'm in an advantageous position. But I have a stack locked. I think white's going to continue being greedy and pink's going to continue breaking. I was wrong. White suicides a lot of troops into me, leaving me vulnerable to magenta. But I, I don't know, 46 v 61, I think Magenta would kill White before they kill me.
He is helping kill me, though. All right. Well, that's it for white. Worst case, I get second, but I definitely don't want to take third. I am faster than Magenta, so maybe I can use some speed in the end game. Try for the good blitz roll. 35. Yeah, he's got me. I get second. And that's a GG. For uh, 61 to 35, there's no way I can recover from this. Regent is going to take enough of the board, break all my bonuses. We finish in second place. Yeah, he played it nice and slow, too. Magenta is a much better player than White. White is expert max, beginner intermediate expert. Um, Magenta could be master or grandmaster. Let's see their ranks at the end of the game. So what happens is Magenta is taking the rest of the board now. Good game, sir. Excellent. What a gentleman. <laughs> all right that was a great instructive game of classic fixed i think it was interesting i think it went a number of different ways i didn't necessarily have to kill white when i did um but white showed their true true enough colors we get battle points i'm not going to go into the battle points system in this video and yeah didn't i call that white was an intermediate and magenta was a master um red was also a master poor guy that's uh that that no australia no win bullshit gets you master ranked in in uh black and green were beginner ranked players okay so we were uh zero on the leaderboard let's take a look at where we populated currently sitting as a master 4014 and we've gone 41 and 45. Uh, i hope you all enjoyed this video stay tuned we're going to do a series of uh, tutorial style videos for beginners i hope you enjoyed let me know um, in my discord the types of questions you'd like answered as beginners don't let me know on my youtube comments let me know on my discord because then they'll actually get answered ladies and gentlemen i hope you all enjoyed this video i hope you found some of it fun and entertaining maybe even a little bit educational and informative if you are interested in getting better at the game of risk i invite you to subscribe to my channel and come along the ride with me i have a daily release on youtube and i stream on twitch almost as often you can check my page for the upcoming schedule if you would like to support me in my mission to grow this game into its destiny you can join my patreon you can sign up join my discord get notifications for when i go live on twitch catch the next stream and now you can become a member of my youtube i hope you all enjoyed and until next time for all of you on the path to world domination, good games and good luck.